Welcome to the AW Services YouTube channel. Today's video is a continuation on beacons. When I bought my van, it was new to me. It only had previously one owner. I wanted to fit beacons on there as I needed beacons for work. So when I wanted to plan where I was going to put my beacons, I also thought about wiring, installation, um, ease of use, where would I put the switches. My van's a 2016 Renault Traffic Business. I've got a, quite a few switch blanks in the dash, which would have been for a different model, maybe a sport version, may have had extra functions. I've got heated um, heated windscreen, I think that one is, or heated mirrors, and then three blanks. Couldn't get any OEM switches from a scrapyard, and I couldn't get the wiring looms to match to make, modify, and create my own switches that looked OEM. So instead of doing what most installers do on higher vans and fleet vehicles, is just hack a hole anywhere with a drill bit and put a toggle switch in there. Looks like something a five-year-old's done shopping at Halfords. I wanted to think about a better way to do it, which was easier for me. It was tidier, but it didn't ruin the aesthetics of a vehicle that was in a very good condition. So beside my steering wheel on the right-hand side, I've got what I call my coin caddy, little pull-down box. And in that box, I've mounted three missile-style toggle switches and covers. These are a brilliant switch because when the covers are closed, the switch is physically shut off, turned off. So it's a good way of knowing whether something is on or off. But you must get your wiring right on the switch first. So I've got three switches. I've got rear beacons. I've got LED rear sight scene lights, which are floodlights on the rear roof bar. And then I've got my rear beacons. So what I've done here, I've taken this caddy out. I've put some insulation tape in here and marked out where my centers are to drill my switches, which I believe these are 12 or 16 millimeter switches. I then secured the switches in there, tightened them up and then put Loctite on the back of the ring nuts on the back of those. And all I've done is created a wiring loom specific to my application. So I've got one live coming from a fuse supply um, from the vehicle's leisure battery uh, with a fuse. And then I've just all I've done is connected the live across the bottom of each switch, um, terminated all my grounds, which would be my neutrals, and then wired my switches in like so. So I've got live coming in the bottom. I've got live as the output and then a common neutral common ground. And what I did there is made the wiring loom to suit and then very carefully using um, wiring loom tape and spiral tubing. I made the loom so it was in behind the switch box. It's currently coiled up in a 12 inch coil. So if I want to take this out to get to the um, OBD2 port for the ECU, I can do that with these. But I have put two additional self tappers just in the corner on the insides to prevent this from falling out because on many occasions I've had this open I've gone to jump out the van and my right knee has taken this out and it's just fallen off but the way that I've done it is my wiring on my switches is all labeled with a brother label printer and they're all on spade connectors so if they do fall out they're just going to pull off they're not going to short out because they're all female connectors and that's what I've done there. I've also um, previously mentioned that my beacons and my LED lighting are purely and only fed from my 12 volt, 110 amp hour leisure battery in the rear of my vehicle behind the bulkhead. So that split charge relay um, charged, also charged by solar. So my additional lighting is completely independent than the vehicle's normal starter battery because a common problem that you find in most fleet hire vehicles um, whether it be enterprise or a lot of the big giants that specialize in fleet vehicles tippers etc they always wire these off of the main battery you're working you're at a side of a road doing some road works tree surgery um, digging a hole putting utilities in you've got your beacons twinkling and flashing all day long then you go jump in your van at three o'clock when you go home early you start your vehicle and it doesn't start because you've absolutely caned the vehicle's starter battery so it's always key to think about additional power 
I've got a leisure battery for that specific reason. It works perfectly. All of my beacons are low current draw as opposed to the older style rotary beacons from Lucas, Premier Hazard, Haztec, MoFlash and all the companies out there where they used to use like halogen bulbs. LEDs are very um, energy friendly. They use a very low current draw and you know they work brilliantly they're brighter and they're easy and maintenance free for so many thousands of hours of cycles but i thought i'd share that with you that's my additional 12 volt switching for my beacons and led floodlights it's hidden away and it looks tidy and you wouldn't see any additional holes drilled in the dash at all or any halford style switches toggle switches that have been poorly hacked into the dashboard I've got a nice clean dash as it was when it left the factory. However, I've got beacons, but I've hidden my switching to make it tidier. And then my windscreen suction mount beacon is wired off an additional 12 volt accessory socket that I've put in the blanking uh, place here for the, the single din for the bigger stereo. But I thought I'd share that with you. That might inspire you. It may help you also if you're doing an off grid overlanding uh, vegan van life van and you want lights in the back of your van or floodlights spotlights for going off road uh, while you take your instagram po photos etc but if you like this video and it helps you subscribe support the channel give it a thumbs up give it a comment um, press the bell icon for notifications when new videos are published and you'll get notified straight away to subscribe is absolutely free all you need is a google account and your subscriptions help channels like myself massively because we're not big we're independent we say what we think we're not sponsored or endorsed by anybody and so many subscriptions watch hours and your interactions comments likes dislikes they all help the alg algorithm on youtube and support the little man like me but thank you for watching aw services until the next video thank you bye bye